Anyway. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started tonight. We're going to start tonight with a public hearing for an annual performance report. I'm going to ask Dr. Curtis Snow, our Deputy Superintendent of Schools, to come up and present that report. At the end of the report, if anybody would like to make comment, I'll ask that you come to the podium and state your name. And if you'll keep your comments to about two minutes, we'd appreciate it. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Dr. Null. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, and community. Uh, my pleasure to be here tonight to present to you an overview of our 2015 annual performance report. The annual performance report uh, is available in its entirety on the Conroe ISD website. Uh, you can go into the accountability tab uh, and find all of the information that I'll be sharing tonight, as well as a copy uh, of this PowerPoint uh, and the full performance report. Uh, the annual performance report is a compilation of several different reports and documents, uh, first of which is the Texas Academic Performance Report, or TAPER. Uh, also, the PEAMS Financial Standards Report, uh, the Campus Performance Objectives, which come from the Campus Improvement Plans, uh, the Report on Violent and Criminal Incidents uh, from campuses, and also the reports of graduates enrolled in Texas institutions of higher education. Included in this year's report from the TAPER uh, are the results of STAR, AP exams, college entrance exams. Uh, also in the TAPER are fifth and sixth year extended graduation rates, attendance data, and demographic information. The PEAMS financial, financial Standards Report is separate. It used to be included in the AEIS report, uh, and it is also published on the TEA website, and there is a link from our TAPER uh, and also from our annual performance report um, directly to the PEAMS Financial Standards Report. Uh, beginning to look at our TAPER, our 2015 accountability rating was met standard. 2015 special education determination status was needs assistance, as we've previously spoke about uh, in meetings before. We understand that's an area uh, of concern for us that will continue to work forward. Looking at enrollment, uh, our 10-year enrollment trend from 2005 to 2015, you can see our 2015 number was at 56,164. That would have been uh, the enrollment in October of 2014 from last year. Uh, just to note that our current enrollment as of this morning was 58,343. So the growth continues. To our student membership, you can see our breakdown at 6.3% African American, 35% Hispanic, 51.7% White, 0.5% American Indian, 3.6% Asian, 0.2% Pacific Islander, and 27 of two or more races. Uh, economically disadvantaged students at 35.8%. It should be noted that that's uh, a demographic that's actually on the decrease. That's gone down uh, each of the last few years. We're down uh, uh, almost two points from previous years. And our English language learner population is at 13.2%. As we do in uh, so many ways, we like to benchmark ourselves with comparable districts. For many of you that uh, attend all of our board meetings and, and for our, certainly our school board, you've seen a lot of this data already, kind of framed in different ways. So uh, we chose to do this tonight to let you see how we compare to those districts that we often benchmark ourselves against. So this first slide here shows you the star percent at phase in, students that passed all subjects uh, this year, and you can see Conroe at 87%. For students that passed and made advanced standards in all subjects, we were at 28%. Percent of our students that met or exceeded progress, you can see the breakdown there from reading and math, 64% in reading, 59% in math, and I would highlight in math, really only ninth grade is included in this bar, so it's kind of deceiving. Um, our elementaries, intermediates, and junior high campuses did really well in math. It just didn't count in this year's accountability. So that's an area that we feel like we'll see a large bump next year um, just because they will all be included in the accountability. Our English language learners, um, another one of those areas that we're, we're working hard to improve on. Uh, all students, uh, or students passing all subjects at 60%. And then our special education students at 51%. Um, you can see it's an area of, of target for us. It's also an area of target for many other districts. We are uh, uh, in company there of, of a lot of us trying to, to uh, work on that and improve our scores. Uh, 
our economically disadvantaged students, once again, at phase in for the blue and then advanced standard for the gold. Uh, we were at 75% and 11% with our economically disadvantaged. Attendance rate at 96.3% last year and uh, went ahead and added kind of a new slide this year because this is exciting. Uh, for the first time, we have passed the state average in attendance, and that um, attendance lags. So what we're seeing is actually not even last year's attendance here. We're seeing a year even further back, and that's um, this would have been the first year. You know, attendance always been very important, but it became a part of the accountability system. It really kind of became more and more important, and our campuses have done a fantastic job of focusing on attendance from, um, you know, we have teachers that call every day to make sure kids are showing up, um, special programs that go on. We have our community outreach department with Rod Chavez and his team have gone in to really focus with campuses to help improve attendance and you can see that it's paid off. So 96.3%, like we said, that's almost two year old data at this point, but current year to date, 96.7 right now. So what a great start, yes. Is that attendance from K through 12? Is that yes. Seniors? That's everybody. Overall, yes, everybody included. Dr. Stockton always mentions if we had one slide to show the whole picture, this would be that slide and it's an annual dropout rate. Um, it's, we wanna make sure that we, our kids come to school and this slide is a picture of what the entire district does. It starts in kindergarten, it's every auxiliary department, it's every campus, it's everybody making a difference in a child's lives to get them at school and you can see at 0.1% for our seventh and eighth graders and then at 0.5% through our nine through 12, that's a number to be very proud of. Mm -hmm. And we wish it was zero, absolutely, but that's a number to be proud of and that's a lot of work uh, by our campus staff to make this happen. Does Umble not report that or do they? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, we pulled this right off their chart. It just may have been a number just below ours and it, and it allowed it to show up at 0, 0.0. We, Junior we have been high, zero in the past. Yeah, and we've the, been zero at the, in the past. Yeah, junior high, it's, it's, you can get a zero. Um, on in a junior high, typically um, that's a reporting issue when you have a dropout in junior high. We, we don't lose that many, but you may have a student that moves out of state and they don't report back. And if we lose track of them, the state counts them as a dropout. Understood. So this will be our class of 2014, the four year cohort. So how, how far did they get uh, in four years? And you can see uh, for us, 94.7% graduated, 2.9% continued. So this is those high school campuses continuing to reach out to those students that didn't quite make it. Could have been a test score, could be a lack of credits, but they keep pulling them back. Uh, even those students that may have wanted to be a dropout or were a dropout, they get recovered. We call it recover. They go on the hunt. And they do a great job of pulling those students back in. And you can see that when you go to the 2013, the five-year cohort. So at the end of five years, we, we bump all the way up to 96.5% graduated um, and 1.4% receiving a GED. So we, uh, can, we don't give up on them after four years. We have those big graduation ceremonies, but there are those students that we continue to work with um, even beyond those graduation ceremonies. Now we, we understand that our sophomores and below are House Bill 5 um, students, so the graduation plans are changing. Uh, but for our juniors, seniors, and those that have already graduated, they've been on the old graduation plans. And so this uh, shows the percentage of students that graduated under the recommended plan or the distinguished plan on the old system. And you can see at 91.4, uh, that's a great job of our students taking hard curriculum, uh, also our counseling staff of really helping to push students into those programs. Our percentage of students taking AP exams, we talked constantly about the benefits of AP and dual credit. Um, to see 35.2% of our students attempt at least one AP exam before they graduate is a great thing. And it's magnified by the fact that we have such a large course catalog of dual credit courses as well that aren't even included in this number. So when you, when you look at this and the dual credit, that's a difference maker for students as they go through high school and move on to college. Our AP test scores, as you can imagine, if we're gonna test more students, sometimes we do see a little bit of a bump down in our overall performance. Uh, and at 66.2, that's a, that's a good number. It's a number where we have room 
to improve there. And we continue to work on that um, to make sure that our students are successful once they do take those tests. I will note that many of our campuses, um, which are unlike uh, other districts, we really encourage students to take the test. You know, some places, if a student took a course and they didn't feel like they were going to be successful in the test, they would just tell them, you've taken the course, but not to take the test. Our campuses would encourage kids to take the test. So we may have students that would take six or seven AP exams in a single year over a two-week period. So tough to prepare for uh, seven exams in two weeks. Our percent of 2014 graduates that have taken the SAT or ACT, you can see at 68.3. This is a number that we expect to go up. Uh, we actually have campuses now that have uh, chosen and are now beginning to give the ACT during the, the school day, which will pr provide access to many students that may have not had access to those tests before. Uh, we've also added testing sites uh, for the Saturday test within our school district boundaries. And then students scoring at, at criterion or above on those college entrance exams, 44.9 for Conroe ISD. And the financial portion, which I, once again you can access through the taper on our website, I'll just hit a few of the highlights of our financial performance. Um, once again, as we benchmark to those districts which you've seen us compared to in all the academic slides, you can see that we've done well, very well on the academic slides. And then when you put this slide up there, it really magnifies what we do uh, on the academic side at a dollar twenty-eight overall tax rate, um, you know, eleven cents better than even the next closest one. The Comptroller Recognition, the Financial Allocation Study for Texas or FAST is a report released by the Comptroller's Office that rates school districts on their academic performance in relation to their cost for taxpayers, so just as we were speaking of. And Conroe ISD is one of only four school districts in Texas to have earned five stars in each of the five years since the beginning of this program. When you look at our operating expenditures, um, you can see that at 60.97% of our budget into instruction, well beyond the state average, um, and that's a number that we're proud of. As you look down, you can also see you know, many of the things that we talk about, our priorities, you see them come through in our budget. Our school leadership is important to us, our guidance and counseling is important, um, and also our security is important to us, so we provide that for our campuses. 2014-2015 staff information, 50.5% um, of our staff are teachers. Uh, average years of experience, 11.3. Average years in the district at 7.1. Teacher turnover rate at 14% is uh, you know, over two and a half points lower than the state. So that's to be proud of. And our average teacher salary, 53,340. We also report during our annual report the criminal incidents that occurred on our campuses. We had 59 reportable criminal incidents at 13 different campuses this year. 42 of those were felony controlled substance. Still the number one cause for those felony controlled substance comes straight out of the medicine cabinet at home. They are prescription drugs that find their way onto our campuses. Um, we did see an increase this past year of those synthetic, and we've, we've read about that, we've talked about that in the past, the synthetic LSD and those type of things that you've read in the paper. We did see a little increase in those, but still the majority of our felony uh, controlled substance are prescription drugs. We get a report back every year uh, of our students that attend four-year public universities or two-year um, public junior colleges in the state of Texas. Uh, you can see that we had 1,773 of our students um, go forth to those type of universities. Now this can be a little misleading because we also send a lot of kids to private schools. We send many kids out of state. So we're not seeing a full picture, but at uh, 1773, that, that represents a little more than half of our total graduates. And we're usually about 3,300 graduates uh, each year. So you can see how many have moved forward. And when they get there, they've done pretty well. Well, we know that freshman year of college, um, we may not all want our GPAs thrown up here from our freshman year of college, but uh, <laughs> our kids really have done well. At, you know, those making 2.5 or above, uh, that's a majority of our students that have gone on to be successful um, in their first year. Dr. Noll, I'm just yes. curious, how do you even get this, this information? The, the state actually publishes it and sends it to us. Wow. 
So they they pull it. You know, there's a question of complete accuracy on you know, making sure that they that it mm -hmm. you know everything gets reported correctly, and we can't verify that. But they send us an annual report. Mine was never accurate. At least that's what I told my father. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very true. Very true. So once again, if you go to our website, you'll see the annual performance report. It has links to many different sub-reports in there that you can find all the information that was shared. Additionally, this PowerPoint uh, is available, and all of that information is up and posted on the CISD website at this time. Okay. At this time, I'll ask anyone who wants to make a comment to come to the podium and make your comments. Okay. Seeing no takers, that concludes our uh, public hearing. Thank you. Okay. Call this meeting of the Conner Independent School District Board of Trustees to order that the record show that a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, and that the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 617. Um, if you would, please stand with me as Mr. Sanders leads us in the invocation and uh, Mr. Kidd in the Pledges of Allegiance. Yesterday, we celebrated the life and the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Throughout his life, he turned to prayer for his own spiritual fulfillment while also delivering prayers to the public as a way to inspire and to reaffirm a quest for peace and social justice. The Reverend Dr. James Alexander Forbes, Jr., who is Senior Minister Emeritus of the Riverside Church and President of the Healing of the Nations Foundation, said, if you want to know the source of his dream and his courage, understand what he lived for and why he was willing to die for it. I'd like to read to you uh, one of several prayers that Dr. King recited during his radio broadcast from Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, between July 5th and September 6th, 1953, while Dr. King was then a graduate student at Boston University pursuing a Ph.D., in philosophical theology while he was spending his summers at Ebenezer with his father assisting as an associate pastor. O thou eternal God, out of whose absolute power and infinite intelligence the whole universe has come into being, we humbly confess that we have not loved thee with our hearts, souls, and minds, and that we have not loved our neighbors as Christ loved us. We have too often lived by our own selfish impulses rather than by the life of sacrificial love as revealed by Christ. We often give in order to receive. We love our friends and we hate our enemies. We go the first mile but dare not travel the second. We forgive but dare not forget. And so, as we look within ourselves, we are confronted with the appalling fact that the history of our lives is the history of an eternal revolt against Thee. But Thou, O God, have mercy on us. Forgive us for what we could have been but failed to be. Give us the intelligence to know Thy will. Give us the courage to do Thy will. And give us the devotion to love Thy will. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to see Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Sanders and Mr. Kidd. Uh, item 2A, Special District Recognition, Dr. Stockton. This is uh, January is, is a School Board Appreciation Month in the state of Texas. And we are excited tonight to recognize our school district. Here rep representing administration is one of our newest doctors, Dr. Tamika Taylor. She's going to come up and she's going to uh, present some well wishes. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I am truly honored for this opportunity to stand in front of you tonight on behalf of Conroe ISD's administrators, educators, staff members, and students to show thanks and gratitude for all you do. With unselfish effort, 
you volunteer your time and talents to children, to learning, and to the community while continuing to strive for improvement, excellence, and educational progress in our schools. You work tirelessly to strengthen our educational system and improve future prospects for our children. Although the month of January commemorates the school board appreciation, we appreciate everything you do throughout the school year each and every day. Tonight, I am presenting tokens of appreciation on behalf of the students of Conroe ISD, as you will see behind you. This is an expression of gratitude for your leadership, for your support, for the countless hours you give that truly make it a great day to be in CISD. So audience, please join me tonight in honoring and giving thanks to the CISD Board of Trustees for their dedication and commitment to fostering a bright future for our students and community. I just want to say thank you uh, for that uh, very for, the, for those very kind words and to each of you um, I just want you to know from a personal level and I think I can dare speak for the rest that uh, it is really a blessing to serve I mean I hear all the time you know why do you have a job that doesn't pay anything why do you do that I mean everybody always complains well they really don't and I want you to know that we all know why they don't complain very much and I'm looking at them okay so thank you back at you but we accept accept your thanks and and we are proud to serve so anybody else say it better oh, Carol, <laughs> thank you very much it's very kind, very uh, kind. Item, item 2b citizen participation do we have anybody signed up to speak no sir we do not very good item 3 the consent agenda I've had no request to remove any items uh, are there such at this time no sir very good and then I will entertain a, a, a motion and a second. Motion. Second. The motion and a second. All those in favor of the consent agenda as posted, please ra uh, raise your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item passes. Item 4A, uh, consider approval of du dual credit CTE emergency medical treatment course. Dr. Stockton. I'm going to ask Mr. Jim <coughs> Caker, Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education, to come present this item. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Uh, President Husband, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, good evening. Um, I'd like to uh, present to you tonight uh, consideration for the approval of a dual credit CTE emergency medical technician course. Uh, I'm joined tonight by uh, Mr. Greg Shipp, who uh, is the director of the CTE program. Um, and uh, what we're asking for is that the dual credit career and technical education course um, will uh, to appear this coming year um, for certification in emergency medical technician. Uh, included in the course are the skills necessary to provide emergency medical care at the basic level of life support and also the emergency service uh, and services service, -to -service uh, clinical support. Um, and uh, at this time we would uh, also like to tell you that it will be offered through Lone Star uh, College in Montgomery County campus. Would like your consideration for approval. Mr. Thank President, you. I move we approve as presented. A second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, I have a question. Please. Yes, sir. Tell me what type of certificate that our students will get upon completion of this course. If it would be uh, EMT certification. So it's the EMT basic? Yes, sir. They will walk away with the EMT basic. Tell me kind of if they weren't in school, what's the number of hours? Uh, if, if I wanted to go get my EMT basic, what's, do you have an idea of the number of hours that I would have to go take class? Yes, sir. To I get? can tell you uh, the number of college hours would be approximately uh, six for the basic certification. Okay. So this is really a whole year of college right. that we're offering for our students yes, so they walk away with a basic EMT certification which allows them to basically be employed immediately Absolutely. and then it puts them on an advanced path if they want to go for other certifications yes, in that area right. as well all right thank you this would also help with our nursing 
shortage in the state, correct? Because once they have that EMT certification, it helps with nursing school and everything else, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Any further discussion, questions? No. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Ship. I know you've been working on this for a while. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Yes. Good job. Awesome. This is wonderful. Uh, item 5A, Comprehensive Annual uh, Financial Report, Dr. Stockton. This time I'll invite our uh, Chief Financial Officer, Darren Rice, to the podium to present our uh, presenter. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. This evening we'd like to recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the 2014-2015 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, or CAFR. At first, I'd like to recognize the staff that is here that was very instrumental in, in developing the CAFR. Janice Sowers, Karen Garza, and Cindy Westrup. They did a great job. <laughs> the CAFR was presented to the Audit Committee of the Board of Trustees on Wednesday, January 13th for their review and comment. The report was favorably received by the Audit Committee. Sarah Roberts, a Weaver Senior Audit Manager, is here today to comment on our financial report and then address any questions that you might have. Sarah. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Sarah Roberts, and I'm a senior manager with the firm Weaver & Tidwell, the district's external audit firm. I'm here tonight to present to you the district's comprehensive annual financial report for the year ended August 31st, 2015. I understand that you have received copies previously, um, so I'm just going to go through and um, go over some of the high points and I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. I'm going to start my presentation with the end result of the audit, which for the case of um, the audit of Conroe Independent School District, which is an audit performed under governmental auditing standards and includes a single audit, the end result of the audit is the issuance of three independent auditors reports. The first report is our report on the financial statements. The second two reports address um, compliance and other matters and the single audit major program findings. Um, the major programs this year were the Child Nutrition Cluster and Title II Part A. In our um, report on the financial statements, we expressed an un unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion, which is the highest level of assurance that you can get. Our reports on compliance and internal control over financial reporting and internal control over compliance both were as good as you can get. C clean opinions, no reportable instances of noncompliance, no material weaknesses in internal control identified. So as good as you can get. Okay, moving on from the reports. The first financial statement of the district is a statement of net position, which is basically the balance sheet of the government as a whole. <laughs> the district's net position at August 31st, 2015, is about $111 million. Approximately 10% of that is unrestricted net position. One thing that I did want to bring your attention to is that there are some differences in the 2015 statement of net position compared to the 2014 statement, resulting from the implementation in 2015 of um, Governmental Accounting Standards Board Statements 68 and 71, both related to pensions. These statements required that the district recognize a liability for its proportionate share of the net pension liability of the Teachers Retirement System of Texas. That's a significant change. These statements required that the district recognize the effect of implementation of these statements retroactively as of the beginning of the year, which required an adjustment to beginning net position of negative $52.7 million. The change in net position resulting from current period operations was a positive $26 million. Last year's change in net position was a positive $15.2 million. The increase this year primarily relates to increased property tax revenue. Moving on to the fund level financial information, general fund total fund balance at the end of the fiscal year was $121.7 million. Of that, $115 million was unassigned. And that represents 29% of fiscal year 15 general fund expenditures. Last year's ratio of unassigned fund balance to general fund expenditures was 20, 26%. So that ratio is consistent, but slightly increased this year. 
net change in fund balance for the general fund was a positive $20.4 million. The notes to the financial statements include a summary of the district's key accounting policies. Also, um, some of the keynote disclosures relate to capital assets, long-term debt, and there's also a lengthy new disclosure on pensions. Finally, the district's financial statements comprehensive annual excuse me, comprehensive annual financial report includes a statistical section, which is not audited, but provides some um, additional financial trend information, operating statistics, demographic, and economic information that is useful for understanding the results of the district's operations in context of the district as a whole. Um, finally, I want to conclude by just mentioning a new accounting standard that's going to be effective for fiscal year 16, which is GASB statement number 72, fair value measurement and application. This statement, fortunately, is not going to involve multi-million dollar restatements of net position or recognition of any um, significant liabilities. At most, I expect for Conroe Independent School District, it will result in some modifications to some of the note disclosures regarding fair value measurements. And that's it. Any questions? I, I have a question, I, and I, I think I know the answer to this. Uh, every school district across the entire state of Texas under the GASB 68 had to go back because Texas re our teacher retirement system is a defined benefit plan that is not properly funded. I want to be careful how I say that. But that, that every school district has to take their proportionate portion and present that on the financial statements. That's correct. Okay. So there are some school districts that may not be in the the financial position that Conroe is where something like that actually might put them in a negative net position. Yes, that's absolutely correct. But even in our case with such a large number, it still left us with a positive net position, a strong positive net position. Yes. Uh, right. Yes. The okay. adjustment for GASB 68 was a negative $50 million yes. and you still have a remaining positive healthy fund uh, right. net position. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. I just want to make sure everyone understood that. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you, Sarah. At this time, I'm requesting that you approve the 2014-2015 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Very good. Mr. President, I move approval. Very good. Uh, second. And I have a second. All those in favor of approving the CAFR, raise your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, school district. It's pretty good. Clean. Awesome. Clean. Item 6A, uh, select construction manager at risk for multi-campus CTE robotics projects. Dr. Stockton. I'll ask our director of planning construction, Easy Foster, to come make that presentation. President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your consideration and approval tonight the selection of a construction manager at risk for our multi-campus CTE and robotics renovations project and then authorize Dr. Stockton, our superintendent, to negotiate and execute the construction manager risk contract. In March, you, our board of trustees, selected IBI Group as the architect for our multi-campus CTE and robotics renovations project. Since then, the IBI Group has prepared and published a request for qualifications for a construction manager risk related to this project. We had four firms respond to this request for qualifications, and after reviewing, <clears throat> after reviewing each company's qualifications based on the districts and our published criteria, all four companies, GTT Construction, Balfour Beatty Construction, Morganti, and Purcell Construction were each asked to participate in the second step of our two-step selection process. GTT Construction was selected as the offerer who submitted the proposal determined to be the best value for the district based on our published criteria in our ranking evaluation. The Texas Government Code requires that we, the district, make our rankings to the public, rankings of the offerers public within seven days of a contract award. Although we have not yet awarded this contract, we've included these rankings as part of your, this board item for your viewing today. At this point, we request your approval. I have a motion. I still make a motion. Okay. I second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Questions? No. All those in favor of uh, approval of the motion, raise your right hand. All opposed, like sign. 
Item uh, uh, 6B, consider approval of the guarantee maximum price minimum for the MEP life cycle 2016 projects. Dr. Stock. And Ms. Foster, please. This time I'd like to request for your consideration and approval the, uh, the approval of a guarantee maximum price amendment for our MEP life cycle 2016, our athletics life cycle, and our building envelope life cycle 2016 project. We're going to refer to this project from here and into the future as our 2016 life cycle project to condense that and make it a little bit more efficient. On September 15th, 2015, you, our Board of Trustees, selected GTT, Inc. to be the district's construction manager at risk for this project. Since then, we've advertised and received bids from the marketplace for the scope of work associated with the design of this project. <coughs> GTT has prepared a guaranteed maximum price proposal. And based on this proposal, the district has negotiated a guaranteed maximum price for the project. The guaranteed maximum price for this project is $15,784,048. The contract documents will be prepared by our outside counsel, and then we're also asking for your uh, authorization to have Dr. Stockton further negotiate and execute those contract documents when they're completed. This time we're requesting your approval of this guaranteed maximum price. I make a motion. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> A motion and a second. Any discussion? Question? I, I do have a quick question. Um, looking over this, it looks like Runyon is getting roughly a third of this cost um, and yeah, in, in doing some pretty major overhaul. And, and I know that that campus very much needs it. So I wanted to m make sure that, you know, $15 million is a is a big amount of money, but I wanted to be noted, we're, we're putting the money in where it's truly needed, and we're really working hard to keep those campuses up and running, doing electrical overhauls and everything. That is correct. We, we spent a great deal of time with our director of maintenance, uh, Marshall Schrader, and his crew, uh, the electricians, the air conditioning mm -hmm. folks, the plumbing folks, the people that make our, our buildings run and operate and continue to keep them operating at their, at their best performance possible. So with their help and our, uh, our design engineers, PBK, for this project, we've put together what we feel like is a package that can bring this building into a better, uh, a better environment for the students and also operate at its peak efficiency. So overall, investing this money will help us save money on our monthly utility bill long term. And is that all going to be able to be done over the summer, or is this going to disrupt the campus? Uh, well, we're asking for the, their approval in January so that we can go ahead and order some of the big long lead time equipment. Okay. So as soon as we get the contract uh, um, negotiated and finalized, we'll look, move forward ordering ordering the structural steel for some of the components we've got to build inside the building. We'll order the, the equipment so it's ready. Uh, the idea is to have all the big stuff in place and ready to deliver so when the school gets out and the students are gone, then we'll have everything to prosecute this work and get it done within the summer period. Okay, wonderful. Now, uh, to be clear, though, we will be doing some work overhead in, you know, yeah. in the off hours, but the major portions of the work will happen after school is out for the summer. Isn't, okay. isn't this basically the same uh, overhaul of the, of the mechanical, if you will, that uh, Oak Ridge Elementary just received? Uh, in, in broad description, yes. Uh, I mean, and I don't mean yeah. it in an exact term, but... <laughs> But is this not the first time that we've done this to Runyon this, in, in its life cycle? Uh, yes. We I are, mean, in its life, excuse me. And that's it's what, maybe 40 years older? It is at least 40 years old. And a lot of the equipment that we are attacking at this particular project is original to the building. Okay. I, I just point out that, that that's that's awesome that that school is, I mean, you know, we've, we've spent some other money on facelift there. And, and I assume this won't destroy what we've already spent. It, it's up above. It's it's behind the scenes stuff, so to speak. I'm not saying you don't have to clean up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, the uh, the admin addition we did just a few years ago, and the classroom additions we did a few years prior to that, will be retained in their current state. Their their equipment, their piping, their systems, their their or were were more up to date than the original building, obviously. But the majority of the work is uh, uh, to tie those newer systems into newer equipment for the original part of the building. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, sir. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Uh, for executive session. Um, no, no. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Capital improvements. C. Dr. Foster, I didn't mean to leave you out there, Mr. 
Foster? Yeah, that's quite all right. We are. We uh, have some pictures tonight? We do. And yeah. from this Probably point moving right, forward, we're going to have a lot of pictures for you guys to review uh, as we do our capital improvement update. So at this time, I'd like to move forward with that, uh, with a project we started showing you pictures of last month at the Woodlands High School, which is our girls' locker room edition. Uh, as you can see, it's starting to move very rapidly. Uh, the structure is in place. Uh, the lightweight insulated concrete for the roof deck is in place as of today. So we're moving forward quickly with the systems inside the building and their contractor's goal at this point is to get this building in a dry condition where the walls and the, and the uh, waterproofing is in place so we can continue the work on the inside. So the project is on schedule. Uh, it is opening in two phases. So we're finishing the new additions, moving the girls into the new additions, and then we're going to renovate the existing girls facility. Uh, at that time. So we will turn it over this summer uh, and it's complete as the project is completed. Now the new high school for the Oak Ridge feeder zone, uh, last month you authorized the clearing and the initial earthwork for the building pad. What you're seeing now are pictures of that work that's taken place since the last board meeting during what I might add is some very difficult weather conditions, uh, especially for this particular site. Everything you do causes more mud and more water to be exposed. So, but we are working, uh, and I'll explain what you're seeing here. Uh, the first picture you're seeing is the, the back half of the uh, building area. So you're seeing the, they're, they're clean, clearing from the, what will be the future detention pond uh, to the, to the right-hand side of the picture is your pipeline, to the left-hand side of the picture would be moving towards the uh, Grand Parkway. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at, so I apologize. The bottom of the picture is a pipeline moving north towards the Grand Parkway as you move up in the photograph. Now this is uh, further north. This is the clearing around the commercial reserve that we've left for the, uh, the original landowner of the property to our, immediately to our east. Uh, so we're defining, uh, working now to define the boundaries of the property as we move forward. Uh, this project, uh, to give you the update, the, the design plans for the building itself are in progress. Uh, they're very near their 100% mark. We have advertised and we're going to the marketplace in February. Uh, with those bids, we anticipate working with the contractor diligently throughout the month of February to bring you a guaranteed maximum price that is acceptable uh, for the construction targets to the March board meeting. And that is all. Item 10, legal, uh, level three uh, complaint appeal hearing. Dr. Stockton. Okay. This meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees is convened on January 19th, 2016. A quorum of the board is present, including the following members, Melanie Bush, Scott Kidd, Ray Sanders, John Husbands, and Skeeter Hubert. The pur purpose of this item on the board's agenda is to hear the complaint appeal of maintenance department supervisor, Mr. Chris Lewis, in accordance with local policy DGBA. Uh, this hearing is being recorded. Mr. Lewis filed a complaint against the Director of Maintenance and Custodial Departments, Mr. Marshall Schrader. Because this complaint is against another district employee under Texas Government Code Section 551.074, this meeting will be held in closed session. At this time, the meeting of the Counter-Independent School District Board of Trustees is adjourned into executive session under Texas Government Code 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Everyone not associated with this hearing uh, should now leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. Time is now 6.44. Okay, we're back in open session, 7.25. Uh, the board uh, will now um, make its decision. Is there a motion? Mr. President, I move that we uphold the level two hearing officer's decision and deny relief. I second the motion. I have a motion and second. Any further conversation, discussion? Questions? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed to like sign. The motion is upheld. Mr. Lewis, I would like to say something though. Yes, sir. Uh, I want you to know a couple of things. One is we really do appreciate your service to our district and we appreciate all that you do. We really do. Uh, I don't want that, and every board member expresses that same opinion. I don't want that to go without saying. But one of the tenets that I understand between employer and employee is communication. And I understand that that's not always 100%.
And I think that was probably the case here. And I'm not taking sides. I'm just stating that as a fact. And one of the things, too, that I know, though, about employer-employee relations is that many times the employer has a process that they have to go through. And step one is to have a documented discussion with an employee about a disagreement. And I believe that that's what this was. And uh, a question was asked while we were deliberating uh, if I felt like that would, that even if we did as we did tonight, if that would make uh, the relationship between the two of you stronger or weaker. And I said I thought it would make it stronger because I believed a couple of things. Number one, I believe that Mr. Schrader will make sure in the future that his communications are better. I believe also that if you don't understand, you're going to say, hey, wait a minute, I don't understand. And, and in my mind, that is the resolution that we were seeking was just to make sure that everyone understood Mr. Schrader will work on his communication to, to his team. You're going to make sure, if you're not understanding that, that you're going to ask those types of questions. In my mind, that's a win for everybody. And I just wanted to say that to you. And again, we thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Lewis, the district will send you a written notice of the decision. Um, this hearing is now concluded. Thank you very much. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All those in favor, signify by standing. <laughs>